Greetings and salutations. I can start right back with some more Raid Shadow Legends. And today, let's talk about the Snorting Thug. He's an epic skinwalker. I had a subscriber who commented that he drew him from a shard event, was super disappointed at how completely useless he was. And I looked at the skill set and I was like, you know, this doesn't look like a bad skill set. This champion actually might be kind of good. But it's Raid. So the difference between something looking good and something performing like a hot pile of garbage can only be determined through testing. So that is what I have done today. Let's see how Snorting Thug works out, shall we? Okay, so his skill set, um, I do find compelling. I do think it's really interesting. His wanton mugging attacks the enemy twice in each hit and has a 20% chance of stealing a random buff. Okay, that's cool. I love buff steal. It's one of my favorite skills just because it's irritating and I love being irritating. Um, but 20% is really low. I tried running this champion through content uh, with only uh, completely unbooked, and it was really disappointing. Like, I, it was, it was like, why even bother? And what compounds the disappointment is that he's hit point based, and for whatever reason, hit point based champions hit very, very lightly. They have quite a feather touch with their damage output, and it's kind of irritating. But I mean, I even ran with like Lord Chamfort, who has a fifty percent hit point buff uh, on his aura. Still, I just wasn't feeling it. wasn't feeling the, the high damage. So uh, what you're looking at here is he's here for buff control and buff control only uh, with his A1. If that changes, over on his A2, his A2 attacks an enemy, ignores the target's defense if they have no active buffs. Ignore defense as a super powerful damage ability. It's probably the best in the game. Uh, and have him on a hit point based champion kind of mitigates like how bad his ordinary damage output is. This this A2 actually hits decently hard uh, for, for what you're, you're dealing with here. Dire Defense has a 30% chance of removing one random buff from the attacker when hit, occurs once per hit. So it's kind of cool. You see how these things, these things cascade with one another. Um, your wanton mugging is removing buffs. Um, come, someone comes attack you without any active buffs and you are then able to counter attack them. Uh, if they do have an active buff, you remove their buff and then counterattack. It's kind of cool because once they have no active buffs, it counterattacks. Uh, it works out really interestingly when it works. Um, this dire defense actually does not seem to trigger on boss AoEs, which is a bit disappointing. I don't know why. I don't know if it's a feature or a bug, um, or maybe it's because bosses tend to have those like permanent buffs that, that aren't dispelled. They're just kind of part of their being bosses, and maybe that's affecting the skill. I'm not sure. Regardless, more often than not, you're not counterattacking uh, dire defense, not triggering on boss AoEs. And his aura is uh, accuracy, which is which is a good aura to have in all battles by 40. Which is a good aura to have when you're buff stealing at such a low percentage. You definitely want don't want to resist it because <laughs> you know, it's hard enough to trigger as it is, right? So here's the thing: um, hit points, hit points based champions are are weird to me, right? And maybe they're weird to you too. I'm used to hit point based champions being the tanks, right? But in in raid, hit points hit point based champions aren't the true tanks. Um, the higher your hit point pool, the less likely it is for an opponent to target you, which seems odd. But uh, it seems like defense-based champions play the role in this game. And hit point, hit, the best hit point-based champions, oh, it's hard to say that, the best ones have ally protect, right? Um, Captain Smilla, um, Nazana, Jereg, they bring a lot to the table and they also protect your allies uh, with their large hit point pool. They kind of take on that damage, or um, they use their hit point pool as a protection for for their damage output, like a cult brawler, for instance, with all his poisons and he's hit point based. Um, who's the other one? Maneater. Maneater has like a cool turn down, uh, attack down, and then an unkillable AOE. So they all bring something different. This one is odd in that he does have a high damage ability, but based on HP, which can be kind of low. I, I I don't know. Maybe it's one of those things where his true uh, potential is only unlocked with really big, really high six-star gear. But again, you can say that about, about any champion. So uh, it is what it is. What I did was I put on Provoke gear because you have his passive, which kind of uh, you need to be hit. And because he's hit point based, he tends to not be hit. This is a way to force their hand and make him be hit, <laughs> you know, and remove that buff and counterattack, what have you. Um, I thought that was the best thing to do for this champion. So that's what I did. And I added a little speed in there because his base speed is super slow. 
So his total stats comes out to uh, 43,000 health, uh, 1,100 attack, 1,460 defense. Speed is low, but it's okay that it's low because you do want your opponents to buff up um, before you do anything. Um, crit rate is low, and that is with crit gloves even. Uh, crit damage is low. You know, I just I only had one provoke set. Yeah, it's kind of it is what it is. Uh, accuracy is high enough to not be resisted too often at 103. And he has the I often put him as lead for an additional 40 accuracy in battles. Uh, masteries um, to get the most out of the provoke set, and you really want six stars and you want fearsome presence. But I didn't want to do that, so all I did was I gave him the additional hit points from the support tree, um, and some additional accuracy, some some healing on kills, uh, and then on the defense tree, I just gave him rejuvenation uh, to give him more heals and shields, and blast proof because I was going to put him in um, my six stars with boss, boss fights because he's five stars and you know has his his resistances and everything's a little bit less. I thought that getting that five percent off AOE would help his survivability. All right, so uh, let's go into a fight, shall we? Let's see what's going on. Uh, okay, this is the Magic Keep, uh, where you think buff stealers should go to prove their chops, right? And he's going to do his thing. But again, this, the percentages are so low. It's, it's weird. And I'm sorry this is so choppy. My render is really bad. And my laptop is old and tired. But... You know he does his he, he does his thing. Ugh, God, it looks so bad. Oh, sorry guys. Mm, my laptop. Mm. I mean, it may be time to retire this baby. Sorry, Omen. It's been a couple years. Okay, so here's the thing. He's here for provokes, for buff steals, for all that, and he does provoke Tyrell there, which is good. Um, but it's like if he's not doing his job, right? He's not doing all these buff steals. Uh, it's kind of like if you're going on a long road trip, right? And you bring your funny friend to make the trip go by faster. And, you know, you're, you've been on the road for an hour and all he's talking about is, you know, the two-state solution in Israel and how Flint doesn't have clean drinking water still. And you're like, dude, I sympathize. But if you don't want me to run into mile marker 131 over here on the side of the road, you better start bringing the funny. And that's kind of how I feel about a snorting thug is he's just not, he doesn't always perform, Right. And his his damage output is low. Um, he he's not stealing a shield. That's what we want, really. And, and unfortunately, she does put up a lot of buffs. So even if he lands, you know, his thirty percent chance or whatever it is, I got it up to to steal buffs. Um, he might not steal the one that I wanted. Right. So, you know, it's just it's just one of those things where where yeah, he's he's not dying. So I guess that's good. But he's not always doing what he's supposed to do. And all I really want him to do is steal buffs, and he's just not doing it. And that's with, you know, a four-book investment in his A1, and then another. So six books. I put in six epic books. They're already hard enough to come by. Uh, I don't want to put in any more. I just, I just don't, right? So I don't feel that at level 60 here, with all these other level 60s, he's carrying his weight. See, we can pass this, this uh, level without buff steal. Uh, I have champions that are strong enough durable enough that can do enough damage maybe not this exact team but if i swapped um uh snoring thug out for whisper no problem i'd be done and i'd probably be done by now right uh whisper and draco morph combination whisper with any kind of you know defense down and weaken is amazing and you know i i'd be done and i wouldn't need this snorting thug right so I, you know it just again he's just not he's not fulfilling his promise uh, up to his ability. Now, there are runs. I've had runs where he's stolen everything and has been amazing, but there are few or far between. More runs look like this, where he's just kind of, you know, contributing a little bit, uh, but he'd just be like anyone. I could replace him with anyone, and this run would go exactly the same. All right, but context changes, though, if we change it about... So so this is all with end game stuff, but what about mid-game, right? What if you're in with a bunch of 50s and you're just trying to climb your way through the magic keep and, and other dungeon content i've taken him in to ice golems and and even fire knight he's fine in fire knight with his multi-hit a2 as long as you have you know other champions to either with more counter attack or damage reflect or more multi-hits you're going to be okay 
Um, and he will contribute in those dungeons as well, even though Magic Keep is, is where you think buff dealers should go. Uh, he, he works in Spirit Keep. In Spirit Keep, um, the Spirit Boss will put up the block debuffs, and you can't put in the heal down, and so you have to kind of get through those two rounds um, <laughs> while, while it's impossible to lower her heal. But he can steal that, so that's nice too. Uh, he, he's functional even in the Spirit Keep. So here he is with 50s. So now he's performing completely differently and now i think he's doing adequate damage now he's he's doing things like 3500 that's not that's not bad right it's not a bad thing to do at level 50 it's pretty much comparable with what everyone else is doing chevalier is a bit underpowered right now because i stole his boots for another champion so he's barefoot right now sorry chevalier but his relentless uh is still intact so he's still bringing it um so with level 50 uh, chevalier sinesha Snorting Thug, Gorgorab, and level 60 Zelata, but he's just there for shields and heals, so it doesn't really matter. He'd still perform the same duty at level 50 as he's doing at 60. Uh, now context is different. Now he's kind of doing what he's supposed to do. Uh, now when he steals uh, the attack down instead of stealing uh, the shield, it's okay because attack down when you are 50s uh, against the boss um, is a significant a significant help. Maybe for super OP level, level 60, you don't care um, about that, you're going to get through it anyway, just with perseverance. Uh, as you're muddling through the mid game and looking for scrapping for any advantage you can get, suddenly uh, Soaring Thug provides a whole bunch of uh, utility to the team and, and kind of changes uh, his perception. So that's kind of how I, I view Soaring Thug. He's really good up to mid game. Uh, so if you get him early in the game, he's worth it. That, that ignore defense is going to help you a lot. Um, as you get through, uh, but then he kind of hits a wall. He seems to hit a wall. I think his his percentage to steal buffs is too low, and once you once you accumulate a large library of champions, you're gonna have people that that make him irrelevant, unfortunately. So as we get through the, this fight, he I think he's the number two DPS. I think behind Sinesha. Um, when we fight, I don't remember exactly, but. He does, he does his job. He contributes. This is level 13 as opposed to level 15, um, but that's okay for level 50s. Um, I'll, you know, he's fine. Uh, through mid-game, he's fine. If you get him early, don't feel bad about building him up. He will help you a lot as you get through the game. But then once you start moving your champions to level 60, I don't think that he's going to be one that, that you're going to bring along with him. You're not going to want to invest your precious books uh, into him. He just takes too many. You probably want to put him on... Uh, an older champion that doesn't require a lot of books, like a seer, might help you a lot more in that regard, um, because she only requires like a grand total of nine books, I think, to to maximize all her skills. Uh, so that's probably a more worthwhile investment than someone who steals buffs. Uh, so that's that's how I feel about Snoring Thug. He's he's okay up until mid game. He's fine. He's viable. He he's a valuable contributor. Uh, for a while there, he just stole the attack, so that can be a game changer. If everyone's, you know, <laughs> if I had a, like a different team and everyone's health was really low, that could have been a tide turner, you know. Uh, so, like I said, mid game, he's great. Once you get into level sixty end game content, you're probably going to leave your snoring thug behind, and he's going to become a vault guardian, unfortunately. But uh, you know, until then, you know, he does just fine. Oh, here, let me shut off my head. Uh, video capture, where are you? Okay, yeah, so he did 128. Um, Snatch did 142. So, you know, he did his job. He did he did, he did did fine through mid-game. So that's where he belongs. That's his niche. He is a mid-game helper. He brings uh, a really strong A2, ignore defense, to the team. Uh, he brings some buff steal. He brings a counterattack. A lot of stuff that you don't have early game, uh, he can help you out with. So that's how I feel about it. Uh, you won't bring him to 6-star probably, but up until then, he's just fine. So I hope that helps. Uh, please comment below uh, if you have any suggestions or more thoughts, or if you have at 60 and he's kicking ass for you, let me know how I'm wrong. Uh, I'd love to hear it. Um, please, if you like the video, if you like the comment, uh, throw me a like and subscribe if you want to see more. All right, thank you so much, guys. I'll see you next time.